Hey everybody, Nick here with the fifth episode of the Killing for Sport podcast. I'm joined, as always, by the crew, Logan, Charles, and Kevin. How's it going, guys? Good. No complaints. <laughs> Why do people like that Cupid Shuffle song? That's my random thoughts for the week. Wow, that's a... Uh... I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, good open, Logan. Great, great open. Here are my uh, opening thoughts. Man, it really <laughs> sucks to be a uh, Tyree Kill, David Johnson, and Marlon Mack owner right now. Advanced. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> I'm cool oh. with random thoughts opening the show. Yes. Um. So we'll go ahead and start talking about the reason why we're here today, The Devil's Rejects, <laughs> Rob Zombie's 2005 film, which serves as a sequel and soft reboot to Charles's favorite movie, House of a Thousand Corpses, mm -hmm. and now prequel to the uh, recently released three from hell. Uh, House of a Thousand Corpses got very mixed reviews, and even Rob Zombie himself understood this, as it didn't really reflect the grittiness of the subject matter. Meaning, like, you know, a bunch of backwoods maniacs in the, uh, you know, living in the <clears throat> Alabama, so killing people. It, he's the look of it was way too clean. And you, you would see that if you watch the movie. Would you say it's too fucking fruity? Probably. It's it's two different <laughs> movies, fucking fruity. You know, <laughs> in one, um, very out of place. So prequel sequel rundown at the very beginning uh <laughs> so he he made up for that in um devil's rejects after his experiences with the first i'd say he did a pretty damn good job uh, i've never actually seen the devil's rejects prior to me watching it same so, but i was same cute. i would always like. see commercials for it um around 2005 during monday night raw mm-hmm but I never it's been like ten, 10 years since I've seen it. Yeah. Uh, so with the box office, uh, nineteen million with a budget of seven million, whereas House of a Thousand Corpses had the same budget, taking in sixteen million. Yeah, interesting. The, I would have ex I, I would have expected that it would have done better based on the fact that it legitimately is a better film. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think these these movies have like a very specific audience. So like the sure, the quantity yeah. I guess the profits just, couldn't shouldn't be judged alone. Yeah. Not just anybody was gonna go. Like, oh, I want to see your Devil Rejects. Right. Like my, my grandfather wasn't gonna go see it. My twenty-five. <laughs> never gonna stop me. Never so did Edge go and see it? Me. Probably. <laughs> um. So yeah, I would say it's it's really the ratings on websites that count at this point because these movies on IMDb. Devil's Rejects had a 6.8 in Rotten Tomatoes with about a 50%, which is hard to get for a horror film. House of a Thousand wow. Corpses had a 6.1 and a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. Huh. I can see that. For the longest time, I remember uh, uh, A Thousand Corpses had like a 5.5, but it's uh, jumped since then. Um, so... In the opening of the film, we're given a little bit of exposition about a house of horrors somewhere in the backwoods of Alabama, linked to a bunch of disappearances and deaths. Now, I didn't actually know it took place in Alabama. I thought it took place in either Utah, oh, wait. Nevada, yeah. Texas, New Mexico. That makes sense. I would have assumed Texas, because yeah, I mean, Texas. clearly... Clearly, Rob Zombie is obsessed with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Like, <laughs> yeah. No. But this, yeah, not this, even this clearly <laughs> this, this farm, um, that they're 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 living at, uh, it's it obviously pays homage to the Manson family and the Manson family ranch. Yeah, it's very Manson esque and. I would say, Chainsaw. yeah, similar to, like, yeah, Manson, I would even kind of go as far as to say, like, David Koresh almost, like, legit cult, 
I mean, I, I mean, the Manson family, sure, it was a cult, but it wasn't. I mean, that was in California, like Hollywood area type stuff. So, I mean, it wasn't quite as backwoods. Whereas, you know, mm. like the 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 David Koresh Waco, Texas thing. Yeah. I, it it, it kind of mi- mi- mixed up and mismat or mi- you know mashed up a bunch of different kind of backwoods cult type. Right. So. I think that- I just gotta say real quick. I think Baby will learn later as one of the antagonists. She one one of the rejects. She has a very flower child feel to her. Sure. Yeah. 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 Now this does take place in the seventies, um, but you know, as I watched this, it still felt like this movie could still take place current day. Yeah. 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 I actually did not realize yeah. that it took place in the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only like time piece they show is when they watch the news. Yeah. Um, News clip. So after the exposition, we see this tall, gangly, Freddy Krueger looking guy pulling this dead woman through the dead leaves as the cops drive by. Uh, We're introduced to Sheriff Wydell, who from the get go, you can tell is going to be an interesting character who speaks biblically and righteously. And I will say to this, at first, I thought he was a good cop. I did too. Yeah. There's like I mean, a you could argue yeah. throughout the film that he's a good cop, but but he his <laughs> morality he deteriorates. Yeah, yes. I yeah, think we'll he becomes that. so obsessed with it that it gets to. He's him. certainly not operating within the confines of the law. <laughs> that that much is for sure. They do a good job on that transition of his his own dissension into madness, right? Which we'll talk about. Uh, as we get into the movie. Um, so the family yeah. of murderers is sleeping, and we see one of them is on their bed with a bunch of dead cheerleaders. And the yep. cops call out <laughs> on the loudspeaker for them to come out peacefully. They all spring into action. We have a shootout. Yeah, this scene is shot really well. I mean, you could feel the intensity, especially because they use a really good... Um, or there, There's like a proper usage of shaky cam. It's not too much. Not like a lot, a lot of recent horror films. Well, that's that's realistic, but <laughs> take that. Out. <coughs> oh, fuck. Um, oh. So, uh, cops move on into the house, and one of the members of the family is killed. The mother of the family gets caught, while the other two, named uh, Otis and Baby, escape. Uh, through the opening credits, we see Baby and Otis kill this waitress and take her car after they trick her. Yeah, and. This movie feels so much more grounded in reality that it's like it's hard to watch some of the killings, even if they're just like stabbing. Because yeah. it's like when we saw Sleepaway Camp and even Candyman, those movies were like Sleepaway Camp was so campy, and then Candyman was more like a supernatural thing. It, it was this feels like it could realistically happen. Harder. Yeah, yeah, I would right. agree with that. Um, and with that, yeah. I would say that. Um, because of the grittiness and how more realistic it is, um, it makes it one of the better horror movies that we've seen. Agreed. Yeah. Sure. It really makes you think. Right. And yeah, this is going to be a lot more serious uh, review. There's n- and there's also nothing to make fun of either. <laughs> like no, <they're- laughs> because I'll, a lot of the stuff happens in real life. Right. Right. Uh, take take me laughing. Out. So, why? Um, no. <laughs> all right. Um, the cops search the house and uncover gruesome findings, and they see in a scrapbook in the house that another character is also involved in the killings, like a man named Captain Spaulding, Tutti fucking fruity, a clown. <laughs> yeah, he's also from the first movie. Um. So then, in a elaborate gratuitous sex scene with Spaulding and some lady turns out to be a dream after she shoots him <laughs> for insulting her and he wakes up next to this big jolly woman and he doesn't seem to be happy about it yeah it seems like one of those classic uh, I picked her up at a bar drunk scenarios like you know the drunker you look the better they look or the drunker you are the better the drunker they look, you look the better Something. they are yeah. <laughs> so, so that's probably what he pictured she looked like while he was drunk right <laughs> <laughs> 
Which I actually thought that was the actual scene when I first seen it. Yeah. I mean, and I actually thought that he was... gets up to take a piss and he has uh, skid marks. Actually, <laughs> you notice? I didn't notice. <laughs> Yeah, there was a point where I was thinking to myself, you know what, if I look like Sid Haig at his age, and then I was like, oh shit, there's skid marks. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> Sid Haig, for his age, looked pretty good up until you realized, well, clearly he doesn't take care of himself that well. Stop but it. <laughs> Yeah, he looks like he hasn't lost in a good six eight yeah the teeth were not in great shape but i am sure that was mostly cosmetic (laughs) (laughs) um so yeah obviously spaulding is definitely uh, a scumbag and so then he sees on tv that the the house uh got raided and baby calls him and it's revealed that spaulding is baby's father and he leaves to go meet her and otis so they can all escape Right. My, uh, might I add, I think that the, the, the his uh, his girlfriend continually calling him poopy, which uh, he did not appear to appreciate at all. No. It was a nice touch. I didn't put two yeah. and two together, but it makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> well, I didn't even... <laughs> I, I don't know if it was necessarily whole... related to the skid marks, but I'm sure that doesn't really help his case. <laughs> <laughs> So, we're introduced to a character named Charlie, uh, a pimp that runs an escort lounge played by Ken Foray. Um, He's from the Dawn of the Dead in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, and he complains to one of his escorts that she's not making enough money. She is played by E.G. Daly. Daly, sorry. Mm -hmm. She is played by E.G. Daly, who was Dottie in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. She was uh, voice of Woody the Woodpecker, Buttercup from Powerpuff Girls, and Louie from DuckTales. Woo! And Quackback. I think. <laughs> Downgraded DuckTales. Okay, go ahead. Also, Gargoyles. <laughs> was she in Gargoyles? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're, Wait, you're... She, was she, if she was literally in Gargoyles, that's a little yeah. bit of yeah, a messed up crossover Quackback. moment here. Our <laughs> weekly reminder to uh, subscribe to uh, Disney Plus now for all your Disney movies. <laughs> Yeah, sponsor us. Yeah. Uh, Blue Chew wouldn't sponsor us, but maybe Disney Plus will. Um, This is a pretty funny scene. She talks about how dressing up as Princess Leia will bring in more business for Star Wars nerds who will want to fuck her. Uh, And you should also mention um, the other dude, the... uh... Oh, Michael Berryman, the the guy vacuuming. Oh, (laughs) Oh, I loved it. He's like... What did he say? Something like, I'd fuck her or something? Yeah, he's like, he's like I would fuck her. Yes, Michael Berryman, yeah. the uh, the notoriously awesome actor from uh, The Hills Have Eyes, among yeah. many, many other horror films. You know, I, I actually thought this guy was... Um, Kane? The, the, what? Kane? No. The pilot, <laughs> <laughs> the pilot from Lost, as well as uh, Lawnmower Man. Beth Fahey? It looked like him for a second. Yeah. Michael Berryman no. looks like Jeff Fahey? Michael Berryman? I well, think you're thinking of a different guy. <laughs> well, so he, with the 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 wig on, or whatever, the beard, everything, the package. Okay, time out. You're talking about a t- completely different guy, Nick. I'm pretty sure you're talking about yeah, the guy that played Otis. Oh. Yeah, Jeff Fahey looks a lot like uh, Otis. I Bill would give Bush. you that. Yeah. Okay. Different guy entirely. No, this is the bald guy that was with the pimp. Yeah, that was vacuuming. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he's later, he's yep. in the other chicken scene, you know. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I well, forgot was, about he, the chicken he, scene. He wasn't in the... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's do, here. do with what you will with that, Chuck. Um, So... Charlie gets a call from Captain Spaulding, who curiously, curiously introduces himself as Cutter and tells him he's coming to hide at Charlie's place. To Charlie's dismay, uh, we're introduced to this fake poser country band that seems like a bunch of yuppies, and Baby and Otis subsequently hold them hostage. 
Yeah, and, and, and might is... I add uh, one of my favorite cameo in the movie? I am a huge fan of Brian Posehn. You must oh, really like Sarah Canadian? Silverman. No, I just like really. I really like Brian Posehn. I don't really give a shit about Sarah Silverman. But he was That's in the Sarah movie. Silverman show, wasn't he? He was, but he was in a lot of other stuff too, Nick. Yeah, he I has do. a he has his own career. He wasn't in Star Wars. <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> I immediately recognize that guy. Um, this is like yeah, once a they get comedian, to the, but... yeah. Once they get to the hotel, it seems like the movie slows down quite a bit. They spend a lot of time there. Um, yeah, I would say this is the I mean, lowest still, point still in the point. movie. Yeah. Yeah, this part right here before it picks up, <laughs> but they're like, introducing these characters for a mm. while. It seems like. Um, so they kill one of the, the members to make a point to everyone not to fuck around after that. Uh, after that, there's a, there's a lot of really weird and fucked up things that happen at this point, um, which we'll get to later. So Spalding is driving the hotel and his truck breaks down. So in a great scene, uh, one of the best <laughs> scenes in the movie, uh, he steals a car from this lady after he punches her and he yells at her kid. There's some great lines. He tells her that he needs the car because of the top secret clown business and then tells her... Or the kid. kid. Yeah, Sorry. right. Uh, <laughs> if you can't find a reason why he hates clowns, then he's going to, in quotes, come back and check on him and kill his whole fucking family. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, real real briefly, I, did a, uh, I was at a Q&A at a uh, convention with Sid Haig, and I asked him, was this kid actually afraid of him? And he said, oh, I had the little shit crying. <laughs> wow. And then uh, he said, he, yeah, he said he came up to him later and he said, hey, kid, look, it's just acting. So. Uh, do you have any other Sid Haig stories? Or do you want to? I actually, I actually do, but we'll tell it. It's, well, it's a little bit longer, so we'll just tell it after the review. Okay. So uh, Spalding drives away and then we start to see uh, all the really fucked up things they do to the people at the hotel. Let's just say a lot of bad things go on, like Otis forcing himself uh, onto this lady, and he's forcing her to do these things in front of the husband, and it just gets really uncomfortable. Like I said, the lowest point of the movie. Yeah, it, 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 like we said, it feels too real, and even the actor, actor uh, Bill Mosley, said he didn't want to do it and while it's all happening baby is like sitting in the background laughing it's all really disturbing it's hard to watch um so <laughs> Wydell uh, interrogates mother father mother father fa, mother Air firefly fire. I cannot speak tonight as she is called back at the police station and he just chews up the scenery really well I think uh, we then find out through Mother Firefly that Wydell's brother was actually one of the people killed by the rejects sometime in the past. And this causes Wydell to hit her and choke her while the deputies have to restrain him. And she starts screaming and laughing afterward like a maniac. Um, did anyone else find that uh, that last bit of her screaming real briefly was like overplayed? Yeah. I, I do feel like <laughs> she, Cringeworthy a little bit. she was and baby were the um, the least convincing uh, actors or slash actresses in the movie. Yeah, I would well, say Well, we that. haven't even gotten to DDP yet. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Stalker. Um, anyway, so while Baby stays behind and guards the women, Otis makes the other guy drive out in the middle of the nowhere to dig up weapons that he buried on the way otis just berates them and makes fun of them taunts them and then tensions escalate and they get in a fight then otis appears to be losing initially but he gets the upper hand on both of them and brutally kills them did i mention how much of a shitty job they did trying to like <laughs> like i don't know like they started off like they were beating them down and then all of a sudden he yeah. just I guess it all turns when he grabs that gun. But fight or flight, I guess. Well, 
I don't yeah. know if it necessarily turned with the gun, because, I mean, it was the knife that really kind of turned the table. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. right. Yeah, yeah. And that other guy's pretty old, so. Yeah, if he would have been so sure. old, I feel like they would have had him. Oh. And actually, that was the second scene where a knife comes up, but this, that actually didn't. We're, we, we, we aren't quite there yet with the second knife scene. This scene is all around pretty cruel to watch, because he, like, he tells the guy to pray to God to, for him to stop or something like that. Sure, so yeah, and that it was... Well, it wasn't that he was telling him to pray to God, he was mocking him because he was yeah. praying. Right, right. So, And that, to me, was... Do you believe I mean, God? I mean, I'm not exactly a Christian man, but I mean... I, I, I don't know, I have if, if a little are, respect if, around yeah. it, like, I mean... <laughs> Um, so he bashes the one guy in the head with a piece of petrified wood, and the other guy he appears to be cutting him. But it's it's obscured. So shortly after we find out that he's cut off his face, um, then back at the hotel, more mind games occur as uh, Baby makes one girl hit the other girl in the face so she can go to the bathroom. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> but then she tries to escape, and the other girl... Oral, the other girl points baby's gun at her but it turns out it was empty baby throws a knife at her neck in the most badass way possible it and so badass. she bleeds uh. out and then the uh other girl runs away and then it's knocked out by mr tutti fucking fruity himself captain spaulding who just arrived mm -hmm. now, wait yeah. is that i don't know if that's accurate was he driving that tractor trailer that oh he was uh he was driving the car that he stole from that lady and her son well, I thought that she got obliterated by the tractor trailer. No, that hadn't happened yet. Oh, that's later, yeah. Apologies. Like Shortly after. Gosh. I guess you should m mention, like, she told her that it was clear that she could come out, too. Like, so she thinks that the other girl, the one that gets hit in the neck, right. like, like, has control well, she of the situation. Well, she thought that she had yeah. the whole... Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she had the gun at that point. Yeah. And... I remember, uh, so, I, so I looked at the time when Spalding uh, arrives. That's like 53 minutes in. And that's when I feel like the movie picks up a yeah, much more than it did. Yeah. Like we're finally out of the hotel. Um, so back at the police station, White Ellis deputy finds out that all the reject names are after, actually lifted from characters in uh, Marx Brothers movies, Otis Driftwood, Baby... Captain Spaulding, Mother Firefly, so they bring in a movie expert named Marty Walker for more information. However, it gets hostile um, <laughs> when the cop stupidly asked if uh, they should bring in Groucho Marx for questioning, even though he's obviously dead. <laughs> I will say this may be the dumbest... That was maybe the dumbest scene in the movie for me. They could like, cut this out. I... I, I did not care for it. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there are a handful of scenes that, uh, that they could have cut out that would have made the movie either, I, I mean, not just shorter, but maybe a little bit more cohesive and maybe a little better. But I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to nitpick it or anything. But really? Yeah. I just didn't really like this scene. Yeah, if they're going to cut out scenes, this was probably like number one. I only like it because of Wydell. The actor is great. Yeah. Willie. Sure. Uh, so offhandedly, Marty Wolf and uh, insults Ellis Walker, Presley um, and Wydell says he would kick the shit out of him and then calls him a Hollywood loving pussy and ends the scene by saying fuck Groucho <laughs> it's great I heard Groucho is a Baltimore Ravens fan fuck the Baltimore Ravens <laughs> what? Um, I'm a, sorry that's wait Easter, that's, that's an easter egg to our old podcast <sighs> Uh, it would have to be <laughs> a reference to a previous podcast that might have existed in another place at another time. Um, Otis baby and captain Spaulding leave together while the last surviving girl runs out of the hotel in a panic only to be pulverized by a semi, but let's set up the scene for you. Yeah. Apologies yeah. for burying that lead upon. <laughs> um, <laughs> She runs out with a face. Uh, oh, right. oh, God. Her boyfriend's face. Her, yeah, yeah, it was her boyfriend's face. On uh, her face. Yeah, so her, his face on her face. And she runs around and gets into this hotel room. And this 
lady that she the housekeeper attacks, or, yeah. um, freaks out and kicks her off of her, and so she's running like a maniac. <laughs> yeah. Well, because yeah. the, well, the housekeeper Panic. found the bodies in the tub of the room, and she was in there too. And I shouldn't be yeah. I shouldn't be laughing, but this was a yeah. Just the way she acts, like if she was just like, I don't know. Like I, I, you know, the whole situation. Like if you were in it, it could be the same. But like, like all she got to do is just like not run out into the road. Yeah, I will say this is another it's imperfect panic. scene. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> I actually laughed when she got hit by the semi truck, and I shouldn't have. Well, I mean, the thing was, they kind of like. I kind of like a comedy she scene in a way. Sure. Well, there, that's the whole thing. Like, it wasn't like she ran into the street and was immediately hit by the truck. She lingered there for a minute. It's yeah, just she, like... She I thought tried she to catch gonna, the like, attention. by a snake or something. Right. I mean, I feel like if they had done that scene just slightly differently, if she had just, like, been hit by the truck immediately as she yeah. entered the street, that would have been different. But it was just like, oh, well, she... Because I saw her running towards the street, and I was like, oh, she's going to hit, get hit by a car. And then I was like, I oh, too. maybe she's not. And then it was like, <laughs> oh, there it is. But yeah. like, the way, even in the beginning, like it looks like she's attacking the maid, even though she's not meaning to. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, it's like she played this completely wrong <laughs> the whole time. So, And I mean, granted, I don't know how I would act if I had my significant other's face on my face. Yeah. But... My first thing would be like to instantly try to take it off unless they like stapled it on there. Well, or I thought maybe yeah. they like super glued it. My second thought is that they took her eyes out. Might have been blurred or something. From being or she might have been fucking, rehash. fucking crazy. The fact that yeah. she, she was fucking running everywhere. Yeah, and, like, and don't even know where she was going. She well, just saw multiple well, she was people crazy. get raped and died. Well, she she was right. crazy, but her her vision was impaired by the by the mask. It was you know tunnel vision, so she did. She was. <laughs> She was screaming. She, she couldn't hear the truck, and she didn't see the truck. Probably. Yes, her peripheral vision was missing yeah. because of the mask. Sure. I mean, I, I, that makes more sense than anything just, else, I guess. Just randomly <laughs> running into the road. Um. So, the sheriff comes on the scene, and he meets these two mercenaries called the Unholy Two. One played by, just like the Diamond Cutter, you never saw it coming. Diamond Dallas Page. And the Bang! other guy, Bang! Danny Trejo from uh, Machete and Predators. Uh, he was not in Gargoyles. And uh, tells them to investigate some of the names of the Fireflies on the list. And then um, it's this, this road trip scene with uh, the rejects. <laughs> and This is maybe the best like overall scene in the movie is this is this where the tootie fucking fruity comes in yeah. for the first time? yeah it's the best pointless okay. scene in the movie all right so the best pointless scene in the movie about ice cream um other than you know some character development happens um with tootie fucking fruity uh you know which is kind of strange seeing as though there's their suspect is at large trying to evade the cops as if as if they are the protagonists themselves um, and it's yeah. it's hard to imagine them standing in an ice cream parlor ordering ice cream. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine Spalding <laughs> standing? Spalding. Right? I'll wow. take the tutti fucking fruity. <laughs> I I would think that just seeing Sig Hag in real life would be fucking creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Um, did you think he was gonna kill you, Charles? Uh, it, it, it was tense. Okay, it was definitely tense. I'm I've heard that he is nothing but nice. He uh, is usually, but it's intense. No one from like his movies and stuff. Sure. Like he just looks like he's gonna rip your head off. Yeah, and it doesn't look like he's happy it is, being recorded it weird... saying "Tootie fucking fruity." Yeah. It's a weird interaction. Um, so Wydell is at the Fireflies' house, and he sees uh, his brother there, who tells him he wants him to kill the Fireflies, and starts screaming uh, at him, revealing it to be a dream. And then he gets a call from the Unholy Two. Bah! who find out that Charlie the Pimp is associated with the Fireflies. He then goes to the interrogation room and just randomly stabs Mother Firefly to death, and as she dies, she it claims didn't to... It did seem random, but, I mean... Uh, unexpected. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then... I mean, that's when he kind of turned the corner from yeah, being, yeah, like, good is... cop yeah. to, like, yeah. bad cop. This and... is where the movie gets weird, because there's a bunch of heel and face turns. Let's get weird! <laughs> I mean, yeah, clearly. I don't know if there was necessarily a bunch of heel and face turns. Everybody just turned he heel. Definitely, like, 
I don't. Uh, we'll, it's hard, it's I'll, hard to I'll, I'll, we'll bring it up more later, but because yeah. because we'll I definitely it. want to touch up on it further. Right now, he goes from right at this scene. He's hero to anti-hero, or protagonist to anti-hero. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I yeah. guess that would be fair. It's, it's hard. It's hard to say without going to later on. So we'll just talk about. Uh, it. Yeah, it gets yeah. even. <laughs> and as she dies, she claims to enjoy what's happening to her. Uh, so they make yeah. it to Charlie's Hooker Lounge, mm -hmm. and he pulls a Lando Carlisian. Sorry. Calrissian. Lando you, you Carlisian. On Calrissian? Calrissian. Re restart. <laughs> he pulls a Lando <laughs> Calrissian on them. There it is. And appears hostile, and then they embrace, and then they party with a bunch of hookers. Rocky and Mountain Ways playing in the background. <laughs> drugs, <laughs> alcohol, waving gr guns around. And Otis has a thing for EJ. EG Daly's character named Candy Kong. Just kidding. Just Candy. Not Kong. <laughs> Donkey Kong Country. Um, take that out. So while they party, we cut back and forth to Wydell speaking into his mirror with more biblical talk, calling himself the Lord's Arm of Justice. Yeah, he's clearly losing his mind at, at this point, fixated on ve uh, revenge. Um, so <laughs> this is a weird scene. The next morning, Charlie goes to buy some chickens, <laughs> and the, the salesman <laughs> suspects him of buying the chickens to fuck him. And the Wydell <laughs> confronts Charlie and threatens to kill him if he doesn't assist him in capturing the rejects. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Later that evening, Wydell and the Unholy Two killed the hookers and captured and brutalized the rejects. Um, I honestly couldn't help but find this scene satisfying uh, <laughs> to to like see them fight the rejects finally get put in a vulnerable position. Like, I don't know oh, if we're okay. supposed to feel sorry for them or not, but I can't help but, in a way, root for Wydell, regardless that he's oh sure held on. that 100%. was percent. That was a badass scene, like when she's in the kitchen and he just slits her throat. Yeah, with the song playing. <laughs> yeah. um, so Wydell takes him back to the Firefly house, not related to uh, Bray Wyatt. Um, he ties him to chairs and subjects them to all kinds of beatings and tortures. He staples pictures of some of their victims onto Baby and Otis. He bashes Spalding in the head with a light tube and shocks him with a cow stunner. All right, I want to back up just a second. Yeah. Are we sure it's not related to Bray Wyatt? I'm, I'm ninety nine point nine percent. So it's Bray Wyatt. This is off. So <laughs> was the Wyatt family based off of? That's what I'm saying. This whole time, and I never realized it. It, it like like maybe I didn't realize it, but it's definitely some similarities. Maybe that's where they got the inspiration. It's like Ooh. a very PG version. The We're definitely uh, uh, there. Might need to be some additional research done on that subject. But You're talking I, I about mean, where the rejects so, got their names, or where like no, 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 this where, wrestling character. Where... Um, oh, okay, okay. Uh, they basically now that we think about it, we're like basically seeing like a knockoff of the Devil's Rejects, like a PG version. <laughs> yeah, definitely PG. Inspired. I wouldn't say it's fully. I'm fairly either. sure they didn't take anybody's face. Um, I wish so. they would have. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it might make them a little more interesting. So Wydell eventually uh, hammers these giant nails through Otis's hands. Uh, he unties Baby and then lets her run away while he leaves Otis and Spalding in the house to burn. And then he gives chase to Baby with an axe, and he's cuckoo bananas at this point. Yeah, this oh, is yeah. weird because you're yeah. like... What is interesting about it is, though, even though he is, like, officially, like, off his rocker crazy at this point like you're still rooting for him like there's no way that you're not rooting for him in this moment i feel weird like there's a point where i didn't want either one of them to like i'm like oh then i remember what they did to like everybody in the hotel and i'm like yeah. oh no <laughs> my only thought was once he finally kind of had baby cornered i was like oh god is this gonna get rapey yeah and then he calls her a <laughs> rabbit and everything and he's obviously hunting her and <sighs> yeah I, so where i mean i was still i was still rooting for him at that point but i was like well, I don't know, if this turns into rape i'm i'm like hard off yeah so uh charlie pops up to try and save baby but wydell chops him with the axe baby turns and runs and he shoots her in the leg and starts beating her on the ground however 
Freddy Krueger comes saving the day, um, and says, uh, oh, "Tiny, tiny, sorry, tiny Freddy Krueger." Uh, snaps Wydell's <laughs> neck, uh, and then he goes to save Otis and Spalding. I, uh, I have a pro. I, mm. I have problems with this because, like, Tiny wasn't really well established in general as a character. Did they and, do much with him in a ha- th- uh, House of a Thousand yeah, Corpses? He's, he, is he was in more House involved. House of a Thousand Corpses more, yeah. But a lot more. And also, I just kind of so they were they actually officially back at the the Firefly House. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was their place. Okay, because because uh, for a second I was just like, why the fuck is he even there? How does he know everybody's there? And my assumption is he probably just saw the smoke. So okay, right. now it checks out for me because I, I I wasn't completely following along. So where was he staying at this whole time? He was I don't just know, know, man. Around. Yeah, there's nothing else he could do but just he doesn't stay there. sleep. He just he just stands there and watches everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um. It plays as a happy ending, uh, which is weird since they're all such scumbags, and it's it's hard to feel re- uh, relieved for right. them. But you feel weird about it. Yeah, they they drive right. away, leaving Tiny behind, who purposely walked back into the burning house to die. Um, and cue Freebird, and I think this might be one of the best movie scenes of like all time. I'm being yeah. honest. <laughs> Uh, I really, yeah, I thought it was. It's it's I up there. It was perfect, right? I it's it's up there with the um, the opening scene of Team America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another cinematic classic. It, no, and like, I, it's, it's, it's fitting. <laughs> it's fitting that they go out with a bang like that because they just didn't care. Right. So the yeah. the rejects are uh, driving down the highway, only to be stopped by a police blockade. A slow mo shootout occurs while they're driving head on, um, and obviously they're getting bullets shot through them and whatnot. During the intense scene, the intense part of Freebird, right. when it picks up, Necker Butcher was nowhere to be found, um, <laughs> and they die, or at least for fifteen years they thought we thought they were dead, yeah. which brings in. Just- Three from hell, yeah. Prequel, sequel! Okay. Should is we it review a, this at a later has, time? Has, I don't know. So has anybody actually seen Three from Hell yet? No, but I want to now. I so I watched the beginning of it just to see how, you know, how what happened after Devil's Rejects. Picked up. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, and I guess that's my question. And, and to a point, there are some people who were suggesting that, you know, Devil's Rejects wasn't really a sequel really to house of a thousand corpses so maybe yeah kind of this similar. is just another yeah. kind of almost reboot to the it's it's not really more reboot a, but it's a much more of a direct sequel to devil's rejects and okay um oh, all i saw from the description is they escaped from prison basically as the beginning or something yeah interesting they, okay they miraculously survive and i think it i mean it it makes sense because they're the devil's rejects so therefore they they can survive having like a barrage of bullets yeah they took a lot there at the end. and yeah but because you know they're destined for hell the devil doesn't want them so they they're still alive i really want to see it like the, the sequel now yeah i'm actually i'm doesn't interested matter. in it and i mean i don't know when we we'll put this fit it somewhere maybe maybe but i mean it, uh, it right, could be a minute man watch, like <laughs> i may just go out of my way and watch it myself yeah i mean you've seen the schedule maybe we'll do it at, at some point but there's too much on the list right now. There is. There's just so much stuff. I mean, and, and we're just going to keep adding to it. But I think House, at least House, is probably uh, not worthy of review, but definitely worthy to to watch. Maybe, maybe when I'm in Virginia next time with Nick, we'll all three get together and watch it. I'm just down with that. It. So yeah, <laughs> I'm sure but there's no, a I better agree movie with that. that we could watch. Um, but yeah. So like, for, <laughs> so Charles, are are you and I the only ones that have seen House of a Thousand Corpses? Logan, you and Nick? No, I did not. But Correct. now I want to go back and that. watch it, kind of after this. Uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not as good by a long shot, though. I no, mean, no. I'd say, and and so after, so all right. 
for a long time, I actually had House of a Thousand Corpses on DVD and just never really watched it because mm-hmm. for some reason, like, I had an aversion to watching it because it's just like, okay, I get it. Rob Zombie's going to make, you know, a, a cool movie. So I, I eventually I watched it and I was like, okay, yeah, he he did. That's about what I expected. Now, so so in preparation for this, I, I honestly my my hopes were not super high because I was gonna I, I was really I didn't do any preliminary research as far as like looking at reviews between this and House, and but having seen Devil's Rejects, I I, I kind of went in like I said not uh, sort of low expectations, and I got to be honest, like I really really liked this movie. Like oh, yeah. I I liked yeah. it a lot more than I expected to. And uh, honestly, I, I mean, I was telling my my wife this morning is that like I'm actually almost uncomfortable with how much I like this movie. It brings yeah, back a stark uh, stark difference between it and uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. Sure, like House of a Thousand Corpses, it, it's like a very clean Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then the second half is this weird like supernatural House of Horrors. It's it's yeah. Two different well, movies. I mean the. Uh, I think that the the story goes that Rob Zombie like finished the movie and then realized that it was way too short. Yeah. So he had to add other stuff. Yeah. Um, It's so out of place. Yeah, and and it does. It does feel like two separate movies. And I mean, even even stylistically, I thought it was stylistically. I I liked the movie, but it didn't flow great. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I mean, I honestly like from top to bottom, like Devil's Rejects was just a a, a, a enjoyable ride. Like so, there was... so ratings, ratings time. Um, who? I really liked it. Nine. I th- I think I, I would nine. probably give it a seven and a half, eight. I thought you like were about that, to cause... say six, Kevin, and we were gonna have to fight. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm going to nine. I really liked it. That's my yeah. favorite that we've seen so far. Is this the first time that that I have not been the highest? Like we've we've actually had two people or had somebody agree with me. I think we all like. <clears throat> we're all pretty high. Oh, um, I think this is the first where everybody kind of agreed it was very good. Oh like sure, Candyman. We seem to have good reviews, but like this is like really high up there. Yeah. Like everybody, we should keep like an average. Total for each movie, like a spreadsheet. <laughs> um. So, closing Good thoughts. Good movie. Uh. So uh, I I I guess I wanted to ask about this. So, who were the best actors in this? Because my thoughts, Sig hey, like yeah. Captain well, fucking S- Spalding, Tootie fucking Fruity. S- Sid Haig is great. Obviously, Wydell was but- good. Oh, yeah. I, why, th- I why really did. liked Bill Mosley, like the the guy that played Otis, like, yeah, and also the, the the other thing I really loved about this movie, and and not I know I'm kind of not asking answering the question that I asked, but uh, the fact that they really did pay homage to a lot of other horror movies in this, just because of the casting of certain folks, like yeah. I mean, like John Berryman. Um, among among others but and then of course using bill mosley who was chop top and yeah the That's texas right. chainsaw massacre movies you know i mean and, and and let's be honest like if you look at a picture of bill mosley outside of this role i mean he looks like fucking charles manson in this movie yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, very he doesn't look like himself and it's it's, it's like I don't know. Just the Sid Haig is great, but I, mm-hmm. I don't think enough people really talk about Bill Mosley in this movie. I think yeah, he's, he's just a nice kind of an unsung life, hero, hero yeah. of this film. Good actor. I wish that we had more Brian Posheen because I feel like that the hotel scene, like he could have like it could have <laughs> had the potential to be great when they were all. I in disagree. There. I love Brian Posehn, but like you know, I think it like he's not. I mean, he's he's. He was in there the perfect amount of time. He got his beef jerky and he came back and died. 
I feel like, like his death was so premature. He just walked in and he got shot and he just sat on the couch for the rest of the scene. Just but yeah, I, he was, it, but I think his, his, I think that was kind of the perfect amount of time to have <laughs> him in the movie. Cause especially the, the way they set his character up to just kind of be this goof. It wasn't you know. even goofy the way he was just laying on the couch dead for like, <laughs> like five scenes. <laughs> Yeah, like it was kind of just perfect in a way. But yeah, overall, I mean, yeah, this whole thing was it, it exceeded my expectations by a lot. And I, I mean, like seven or eight out of ten for me. I, I, I I'm, I I'm hesitant to give it higher just because that's a tough thing to do. Yeah, it's tough. But like. I, I don't know why I didn't watch this sooner. Like, I always just thought it was, like, going to be, I agree. Like, I don't know, like, why I never did. Like, I, like like Nick said, I always seen the commercials, but, like, I just never took the time to watch it. And, like, now I'm yeah. upset that I didn't. I mean, I held off a long time on watching House of a Thousand Corpses, and then after watching House of a Thousand Corpses, I just wasn't in a hurry to watch it. So... And and now it's just like you know people had told me oh yeah you don't really need to watch House of a Thousand Corpses watch Devil Devil's Rejects first yeah and right. I kind of wish I'd followed that That's advice because yeah. I I mean grand scheme of things yeah Devil's Rejects is far and away the better movie yeah now I really want to watch Three from Hell but like at the same time it's gonna be I'm interested to see it yeah I mean that said I have no interest in either of the Rob Zombie Halloween films so did uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I have seen them both don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> never gonna stop it, never gonna I, stop I couldn't I couldn't watch the second after the first one. I, uh, <laughs> Halloween, I mean, Rob Zombie. So with that I I, I enjoyed them. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I didn't enjoy them as the originals, but it was what it yeah. was. Oh. I didn't hate it. Next week or the next well, actually, time you are listening. Lim- Nick, 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 Nick. Wait. Uh Charles, you had a uh Sid Haig story, oh. correct? Right. Yes, I did, yeah. I'll be um, right back. I gotta take a shit! <laughs> so we'll just close the show ourselves after the story. No, no, I'm not pausing it. You can, you can do your story and then just... <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll wrap it up. We'll okay. wrap it up. Charles, right. don't edit All that right. out. Alright. <laughs> okay. Before we go, we have a story. Alright, yeah, story time. Alright, I'll be right back. Okay, in 2009, so <clears throat> about 10 years ago, I, uh, went to a convention it's called creature con in california and sid Haig was there so i brought my devil's rejects poster that i had and i got some autographs from him and uh i always get really tense when i talk to these people i've been to a few conventions and um he said uh he, he was going to give me this you know the glossy photo and um he's like do you want me to put any kind of uh you know catchphrase on there and i froze up i couldn't think of anything <laughs> and I just said, "Oh, what's a, what? What's your favorite?" And then he, he like just shrugged his shoulders and shook his head and said, "How about try the fried chicken?" So I said, "So it was like going to say, Charles, try the fried chicken." And I was like, "I don't remember him saying that in any of the movies." I was, so I said, "Sure." And then uh, I almost walked away with the autographs without paying him. So he goes, thirty dollars, please." And I say, "Oh yeah, yeah, okay." And then. Then I ask, I remember I wanted him to to, uh, take a picture with me. So he says, that's fine. My friend holds up the camera. He accidentally clicks the off button. So then I have to go, I have to go over to my friend and tell him, you know, hit this button. And later on, my friend told me when I went over to him, uh, when I was showing him how to use the camera, uh, Sid Haig was sitting there just shaking his head and rolling his eyes. (laughs) So then we took the picture. It ended up being blurry. And I said, oh, there's no way I'm going back to ask him for another picture. <laughs> yeah. and, you and, uh, I don't, and when we were like, we were somewhere away from him and he actually came up behind me and said, Charles, I turned around and he said, you might want these. And I, I had left the autographed uh, glossy photos on his booth. And I said, oh, thanks, man. And then I, uh, I, I just worked up the courage and I said, the other picture came out kind of blurry. Would you mind if we took one more? And he and he just said, "Sure, yeah." And then we took it, and it was everything was fine. I shook his hand, and then that was it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Well, hey, hey you that, yeah, that that turns, yeah, no, that turned around. Kind of, I mean, see, yeah. Sid Haig's a nice <laughs> guy. Because a lot of those <laughs> right. guys will like charge extra if you do like an extra picture or something. I think you're just too used to wrestling conventions. Most of the yeah. horror <laughs> convention guys are a lot more laid back than that. Fucking mocks. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks everyone uh, for tuning in. I would say this definitely uh, was this a pretty one of my one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, I would I would agree. Um, next week or the next time you listen. Um, it will be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Another class. Oh, yeah. And then after that, Langoliers. Uh-huh. Yes! 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 <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, maybe we should watch Langoliers on, on Saturday. Uh, okay. That's the movie you guys should watch. When Is you that going to be our together. live episode? Uh, with Alex. That will be the live episode, sure. Um, so yeah. Uh, thank you guys for joining us and see you next time on Killing for Sport. Hey everybody, Nick here with the Killing for Sport podcast. Uh, we're coming at you live taped Thanksgiving week and we're covering Texas Chainsaw Massacre the perfect Thanksgiving film I still don't understand the connection I mean it's about family and coming together for a meal and eating at uh, eating at the dinner table with your family grandpa the the brothers you know oh gosh it's father it's, slash it's really brother, a heartwarming tale sucking on fingers Anywho, uh, I'm joined always <laughs> by the uh, round table of killing, Logan, Charles, Kevin. How's it going, guys? Oh, good. Leatherface, whoop, whoop. Buzz, buzz. It's going to be a fucked up podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was released in 1974 with a budget between... 80,000 to 140,000. I don't know how you have that long range, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> and it grossed around 30 million. Is there a long range for that as well? Nobody knows. Um, it has proven to be a true classic, almost timeless in a way, besides the obvious influence of the 70s, trends in clothing. This movie holds up incredibly well, especially in the scare factor. It spawned a slew of sequels and remains a favorite among horror fans alike. It stands tall next to my, my Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Child's Play, and many more. The difference is that Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the character it's most known for, Leatherface, came before all these films. Uh, so the Star Wars-esque text scroll... Uh, let, lets us know what we're in for. A, a woman named Sally and her brother and friends face a deadly encounter known as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. A long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, we open on flashes of bodies with sounds of digging and heavy breathing as the credits roll. <laughs> then we open on a shot on two dead bodies um, placed in a provocative position. Uh, in a cemetery as a radio announcement place describing grave robbing and bodies placed in grotesque positions. Um, like a grave, gravestone shoved up his ass. I'm assuming this is Leatherface's doing? Is that what there is? Uh, not, um, not, not I'm going to guess it was actually the uh, hitchhiker. So his it's brother? Actually, that's actually that... uh, answered later. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so a group of teenagers in a hippie van, uh, that is not the mystery machine, um, Sally, her boyfriend, Jerry, and their wheelchair bound brother, uh, Franklin, Franklin. (laughs) and, um, they're going and there's an other guy named Kirk and I, does anyone remember his girlfriend, the girl, the lady in like the Daisy Dukes? Uh... I guess it doesn't I don't matter. know that the names are super relevant. 
Yeah. But I think just Sally and I, like, probably. She's not the final girl. We'll say that. Yeah. Sally. Um, yeah. So they pick up this uh, hitchhiker, um, and he has some kind of weird mark on his face, and he's obviously cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Um, he works at the slaughterhouse. Yeah. Um, hmm. <laughs> he say that, or I think he says his family used to work there. Yeah, I mean, I think it was insinuated that he worked at the slaughterhouse because he goes into the whole making of head cheese and whatnot. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh God, yeah. When quick story, when I, I worked at a deli for oh, I don't know, a month <laughs> and a half, and this one guy asked if he could have a couple of slices of head cheese, <laughs> and I immediately immediately thought of this and i asked the the girl there i said do we have head cheese he's like yeah it's kind of in the back there because apparently no one gets it but i was cutting it and i i saw it sounds it looks just as disgusting as this guy describes it it was just (laughs) all these little chunks of things all held together in this like sort of translucent gelatin it was disgusting (laughs) it's good you'll like it yeah yeah (laughs) Uh, he's he's crazy and um, he's showing these pictures of you know uh, all their dead animals and how it's better to sledgehammer cows like his grandfather and brother did and that uh, the new rather than the air gun yeah the, the new yeah. cow killer gun uh, put people out of jobs they took their jobs <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway so That's he great. he cuts himself with Franklin's knife. Um, but for some reason they no particular reason by the way it didn't seem like he had any motivation other than to just try to freak him out well he's very weird so anyway they, they keep him in the van they're all like what the fuck uh, then he takes a picture of Franklin and sets yeah, it on wait, fire wait. they don't throw him out of the van after he cuts his hand they, they still let him stay I know that's what I'm saying yeah they seems like him. that would be an I'm, obvious I'm, warning sign I would like that's you know everybody cuts their hands every once in a while and keep him yeah he's in there for like five more minutes <laughs> so he takes a picture of franklin sets it on fire and then cuts franklin's arm uh then they throw his ass out and he he starts van. triple h spitting on everybody yeah <laughs> yeah um so they, they stop when, at... they throw him out. when he cuts someone else yeah they got... so yeah. they they stop at the gas station talk to an old man ask for directions he seems on very keen on getting them to stay there, talking about how they should stick around for barbecue that he's cooking. Um, oh, that barbecue. <laughs> then they yeah. uh, drive away to see an old house that Sally Franklin used to live in. Uh, judging by how it looks, there's no way someone actually lived in the house recently. Yeah, there's like, when they go to that house, there's just all these weird, these very specific, like intentionally weird shots that would seem so random but i feel honestly like it's foreshadowing because they see like that franklin sees that um looks like a animal head placed in a, around a bunch of like feathers with um two big feathers like sticking out of its eyes like uh angel wings yeah and then and then like up hanging from the doorway you just see this like collection of bones and that's foreshadowing like the extremities we're going to see later and all uh two of the characters kirk and his girlfriend go off to find a swimming hole that's now dried up but notice a house in the distance so they can ask for help with gas uh they get closer to the house and the yard is full of random junk and cans just hanging around uh they notice the house is powered by a generator and then they find several different cars under military netting and then finally they find a tooth on the front of the porch uh, uh, it's uh it's like they're warning you like gradually it gets just in that small nick of time more and more weird like they see the generator and then they find all those cars which you know we can make assumptions about that especially later given what happens and then and then they find sure. a tooth on the yeah the tooth on the porch and then he makes a joke right. of it. Yeah, which is the last well, warning I mean, the, they have. The other thing, though, here, the I mean, where do they have to go? They're running out of gas. The one gas station tells them 
No, we don't have any gas. Not until, like, a couple of days, maybe. Like, I mean... They, they're they're very limited on their options regardless here, so... When I first watched this... I can't necessarily kid. blame them for making this decision. Right, right, right. I mean, they yeah, were more so definitely like, set up. It's it's telling the audience, I think, more so than... Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So does like, anybody, like, when I was a kid, I thought that guy was like David Letterman. Well, <laughs> which like guy? David Letterman, like, when he first started. The guy that like, worked at the gas station? No. The brother, no, I guess? No, the one that's going off like, with wait. the girl. <laughs> It kind of looks oh, like a no. mixture like if David Letterman and Elton John had a baby together. Oh, the, oh okay. Jerry? The, the, the one other. with the glasses. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if yeah, David yeah, Letterman yeah. mated with <laughs> well, Elton John, this would be their baby. you just pointed it out. I think the dude, <laughs> uh, the dude that finds the tooth uh, with the other girl, it looks like uh, that brother and Malcolm in the middle. Oh, <laughs> or Danny Masterson or his yeah. yeah so um guys uh they go inside uh down at the road sorry Blech. down at the end of this hall there's a wall adorned uh with various animal skulls then Kirk approaches it hearing what sounds like a pig squealing uh and then Leatherface the icon, the franchise, uh, pops out from the side of the entrance and slugs him in the head with a sledgehammer. This is when the the movie gets good. Uh, he starts convulsing, and uh, so Leatherface hits him again and pulls him to the corridor and slams the metal door shut. Um, the girl goes outside, then investigates and uh, falls into a room full of feathers and human bones and skulls made into furniture, bones everywhere. Um, <laughs> So she throws up and runs out of the room as Leatherface appears in what I feel like is uh, one of the best shots in motion picture history um, because he opens the door and appears and gives chase and then pulls her back uh, into the house and uh, into his room and hangs her on a meat hook in the kitchen while Leatherface then cuts uh, Kirk's head off in front of her. I th- at least I think that's what he's doing it doesn't show it that's the thing all most of the violence is suggested rather than and i'm okay with that like it 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 oh, yeah. brings yeah. your imagination out mm-hmm. i think the only really violent scene was when he hit kirk just earlier that was the only thing with yeah so much blood that we yeah so yeah, I mean, well there's some stuff later that's not quite like person on person violence like intent but well we'll get to that but no you're right i mean i and i think that especially for the time like in 1974 there was only so much they were able to really get away with but they definitely pushed the boundaries right um so jerry sally's boyfriend goes off to get kirk and his girlfriend while leaving sally with franklin uh he goes into the side house and finds the girl shaking around uh inside this freezer as Leatherface appears, hits him in the head, and shoves the girl back into the freezer. Um, he then frantically starts moving around the house, acting scared and anxious while making whiny noises, um, and so it's clear that Leatherface is supposed to be a big child. Um, it's now dark out, and Franklin and Sally call out to Jerry and the rest of them to no avail. They realize that uh, Jerry had walked away with the keys, They so they decide to go look for him uh one thing i notice is that the movie makes you feel just as uncomfortable as the characters because you'll remember at the beginning they're in that scorching heat uh they pick up uh the freak and they're running out of gas and car trouble is always terrible they don't have cell phones and us 80s and 90s kids can uh both relate to that when you're looking for someone uh the only thing that we know is that they don't is that they're walking into a death trap First, we don't know that, but after those two died, we know this. Um, so as Sally and Franklin um, are struggling to walk through the woods, looking for the rest, Leatherface pops out and saws up Franklin and chases Sally wielding a chainsaw. Uh, so Sally... Yeah, that was an awesome scene. Yeah. Sally unknowingly runs into 
Leatherface's house, thinking it's someone that can help her. She runs upstairs as Leatherface cuts through the door, and she goes into a room with two old, decrepit bodies, a man and a woman. They appear to be dead. Sally, realizing she's in the death house, uh, jumps through a window and runs back out into the woods and ends up uh, at the uh, last chance uh, gas station from earlier with the old man. She, this is when it's clear she is the final girl. Um, she initially appears, uh, he initially appears comforting and he assures her she's okay. He looks outside, no one is there. Leatherface has disappeared. Uh, he briefly leaves and comes back and, you know, uh, with his truck and beats her and forces her into this big potato sack and drivers drive, wow, and drives her back to the house while, uh, you know, giggling and hit her with her broomstick. Uh, the hitchhiker is also re- revealed to be working with Leatherface, the old man, or as the cook, as he is called. Uh, they are all family, and it's clear that uh, the hitchhiker and Leatherface are brothers, but the cook is either, you know, either an older brother or their father, or probably both. Um, <laughs> the cook yells at the hitchhiker <laughs> for almost getting caught. Uh, digging up corpses, thus revealing Kirby. that he was the one who violated the corpses and robbed the graves that we learned about in the beginning. Also, I think the flashes of the bodies are supposed to be him taking the pictures because he had that camera that he took uh, Franklin's picture with. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they restrain Sally while the cook yells at Leatherface for breaking the door down. Um, and I, I, I did notice uh, Leatherface was wearing a different mask here. It looked like, uh, like an old lady, like he was Miss Doubtfire. Um, but that's the only time we see it uh, because then we see another one shortly after. The other thing was when the cook was yelling at him, he was like, did you get all of them? And you can hear him just like, He's like trying to run, run away from him, and he's running around the kitchen island, and he's talking like, ha, da, da, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, it's like a lady voice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. the hitchhiker gets Grandpa from upstairs, who's actually one of the bodies that Sally encountered earlier. He's actually alive, and they cut Sally's finger, and the Grandpa sucks the blood out out of it as Sally faints. Uh, that scene makes me tr- cringe when I see that. Yeah, that was. I feel like out of all the gory scenes, that was the most uncomfortable to me out of everything. Because oh, it, sure. it, it looks like he's squirming around, enjoying it as he's like sucking her blood out, which is just gross. Uh, so also, she- you should mention how awkward it is when they bring him down the steps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just weird. Uh, so she wakes up the dinner yeah. table and they all start howling like wolves as she screams for real. Uh, the hitchhiker and the cook get into an argument about how he and Leatherface do all the work by finding and killing people while the cook just prepares the food. Uh, do you think that the f- food that they have on the table is human food? Yeah. 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 That's the it's other probably thing. Head cheese. Yeah. You remember um, earlier when Sally uh, escaped and then ran to the gas station and she looked, they like, she looked at the uh, barbecue cooking. And it yeah, like yeah, yeah. Meat. Was that human meat? It looked like it looked like human torso just hanging there. Yeah, yeah. Dude. I mean, they never outright stated it, but it's definitely. Like, it doesn't look like any other type of meat. meat. I mean, they 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 kind of did not bury the lead here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they all but said it. Um. So yeah, and they're, like, they're making. He's selling it, right? They're making money off that too. That's oh sure, absolutely. I mean, best barbecue in Texas. Yeah. I mean, too. Yeah. Franklin was eating it. Well, doesn't he mention something? Um, the dad that he, he's not a killer, but something about cooking or something. Yeah, he says, uh, "I, I don't can't know. take no pleasure in killing." Yeah. No, he's like still. He like still enjoys it, hitting her and seeing Grandpa hit her in the head of the hammer which is we're gonna get to that um i mean they're, they're crazy they're nuts so they decide they're gonna kill oh, sure. sally by smashing her in the head like people used to do with cows uh like how the hitchhiker described in the van uh but they decide to let grandpa do it because he was the best also before this um before we forget <laughs> There's there's this weird like three minute scene where she's just crying and they're like zooming in on her eyeballs and everything and like they're just sitting there laughing at her. 
Yeah. Oh God, it's, I know. It was so uncomfortable. Like that the, the whole, this whole like ten minute stretch is just so. It makes uncomfortable you like squirm and, because like when they're zooming into her eyeballs oh, yeah. and everything, like it's making me squirm. And it makes like... me feel weird. <laughs> Um, Creep me out was in a leather face got really close to hers just to look at her and he was wearing that other mask that like formal mask that he has on he yeah says, oh hello <laughs> yeah. um so Peace. back to what i was saying uh they decided to let grandpa do it because he was the best back when he used to do it in terms of hitting people grandpa's in the, the best uh <clears throat> but you won't even feel a thing he was yeah. he was obviously much younger then than he is now because he can't even lift the damn hammer. Um, uh, so they revisionist get, history. Yeah, so they get distracted trying to help the grandpa hit her, and she gets away. Um, hitchhiker and Leatherface give chase. They make it out to the road as the hitchhiker slashes at Sally's back, and then a Mack truck comes along, and the hitchhiker gets run over. Um, yeah. Uh, I think, and I, I think some people are like, "Well, this the scene, death scene wasn't very good," um, <clears throat> but I, I liked it. Um, I mean, I honestly, I think that that particular scene might have been the quote goriest in the whole film. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what happened to the truck driver? Well, <laughs> so, yeah, he just. Well, well yeah, goes I guess, off let's, with the other let's truck get to driver. that, I guess. <laughs> so Sally uh-huh. tries to get in with the truck driver, and they go off on the other side, and Leatherface is chasing them around, and um, the trucker throws a wrench at Leatherface's head, and he falls over, and the saw blade lands on his he- leg, and he screams in pain. Uh, a pickup truck comes by, and Leatherface, uh, limps ar- Leatherface limps along, trying to get Sally, um, as she climbs into the back of the truck and it drives away and um, obviously one of the best scenes in the movie uh, aside from uh, Kirk's girlfriend getting dragged back into the house is this next one when Leatherface swings the chainsaw <laughs> um, back and forth and uh, it, it, it looks like He's he's dancing to maniac because he's a maniac <laughs> maniac. Uh, and then the uh, the movie cuts to black. Tell us, is he doing that because he's frustrated or he's, he's dancing. dancing? Obviously, I mean that's 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 the easiest read I could get off of that. I mean, it, it just yeah. screams of frustration. So, do we assume he just takes out the trucker that's still there? I don't not... know, man. Like, I'm I'm very curious to know exactly what happened to that trucker. Did he just run Incredibly. off into the woods? Like, <laughs> could have eventually uh, uh, hitchhiked himself, or he ends up just joining the back family. to the truck. I guess. I mean, there's the whole truck there. <laughs> He's so... gotta watch out for Leatherface going back. Oh, this is actually I a guess. Google thing. What happened to the trucker in Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Uh... <laughs> Nobody really knows. He's a hero. He's a very uh, minor protagonist. One of life's greatest mysteries. <laughs> he was a pretty yeah, hefty um... guy. He might have been able to hold his own. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this is a really good movie. It was, it was very fast paced. Like all the beats were just perfect as it was uh, as it went along. Oh man, there I mean it's it is. It's really just I don't have nothing is bad to say. A classic for a reason, for sure. Absolutely. I mean it's it's tough because a lot of times we've kind of come in here with some very imperfect films. And yeah, uh awesome. this one is I, I I hate to say perfect because I mean but yeah, it still but it, makes it definitely, you cringe. It still gives you that fear It is factor. considered a classic for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still on the edge of my seat, even though I've seen it like several times. And it's it's something that, again, it could be real. Yeah. That's where, why it's scary. Well, and I mean, I, this is probably something that everybody else was aware of. Maybe not. But I mean, they, they say this is based off of a true story. 
or oh. it is a true story. It's based off of a true story, but it's actually it Ted Ginn uh, loosely Ginn? based off of the Ed Gain. Ed Gain, not Ted Ginn, it's the football player. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, like Ed or Ed Gein. Gein. I can't. Yeah, yeah. I, is it Gain or Gein? Uh, I think it's Gain. I'm know. not positive. I, I thought but... it was Ted Ginn. This movie, I think people but... started the rumor that it was true, and then when they came out with the remake, they like exploited that. They went with it and said based on a true story. It was just nonsense. Very loosely based. Yeah. Like, dude really did, like, put, like, make bodies in the mask, but, like, the family part wasn't true or any of that. Oh, yeah. Like, well, the Ed Gein thing was made from, it inspired Psycho, Silence of the Lambs, and. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, basically any movie you watch, any horror movie you watch that's based on a true story, is, let's just say it was probably Ed Gein. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like I mean, yeah, like the Leatherface character you could consider to be very closely related to Ed Gein based on the fact that well, Ed made not just masks, he like made a whole yeah. human suit. Yeah. So yeah. So what I'm wondering is like is this fam- that not going off anything the with- the next movies tell us um, cuz there's we'll we'll get into it later there's all kinds there's like several different timelines that this movie is inserted in but do you think like i think these people come from a long line of incest most likely yeah and i i'm not sure like have they always been killers and also uh the grandpa was he like uh when he was more functional, was he also a killer himself? I wish that they he had got, a backstory. Yeah. Yes, that's what makes it scary. But um, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that this has sort of been going on for like generations. Yeah, and I, I think like it got worse for them because I mean they're already like in poverty, but the fact that they they say that like they lost their jobs because of that new gun thing that the cow killer thing and. Uh, they said the cook he said his older brother that's why i think the cook is an older brother but probably also a father because he's obviously a father figure as well in the movie yeah. but um he they both used to work there they lost their jobs so now they they can't you know eat so i think they started somewhere down the line eating people or killing people to eat them i don't know but they have that generator now too yeah it had, I don't know, I guess it had to do with poverty hey, and, like, craziness. So this might be a good time to maybe reference the uh, the commonalities between this film and The Devil's Rejects. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this film seems more realistic because, like, it, they're too competent in Devil's Rejects. Sure. And I feel like I think it's, in this well, one they're yeah. kind of sloppy. Yeah. The Devil's Rejects definitely kind of makes it a little bit more of a well, it's 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 definitely more theatrical and and cool stylistically. Right. Yeah. Whereas this one is just fucking frightening right. the way <laughs> the way that they 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 implement it. And and to be clear, there's nothing precedent wise that they really could have drawn off of for this. The fact that this movie kind of came to be in general like toby hooper clearly like must have some problems i i mean like (laughs) like i don't even know what else to say like this is time this movie is just crazy like i mean this was correct me if i'm wrong this was maybe even before charles manson kind of broke because I think he was in the uh, later seventies, uh, wasn't he? I, I, I I'm I apologize. I know we're probably gonna have to now Google in the middle of the episode, but sure. yeah, <laughs> someone, someone Google that. That's it's definitely obvious. It's the, the whole movie. Yeah, it's very seventies. Like it's see the thing is it, when they're outside of that house, you can tell oh, it, we're in the seventies. But when you're inside that house, that could like hold up in any. Uh, period when you're in there 
Okay, so I, I, like uh, the, 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 those scenes are timeless. The Manson murders were in the late sixties, actually. So, oh, okay, late sixties, early seventies is what I could guess. Um, but e- e- even still, I like this doesn't really draw off the Manson family the same way that Devil's Rejects clearly does. I mean, this is this is a whole other level. <laughs> right. Yeah, Devil's Rejects draws from both Manson and in this movie. I think this movie is just its own beast. It's it's uh so Wow. I think yeah. I think at the time when they cuz when they did Psycho, they were pushing the envelope. Everybody knew that. I mean, yeah. and, then, and then this movie I think did the same thing. Sure. And I mean, this is I mean, gosh, it really kind of was the start of like I I'm I apologize i'm not a movie like historian or anything but i feel like this is like the 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 film that kind of started the whole grindhouse uh, type that does sound... thing because mm-hmm. there really was nothing like it until this came out and then suddenly everybody's trying to kind of outdo the tex chainsaw massacre mm-hmm. and you know like, there really just was nothing else like it. And there still has been really nothing else like it. I mean, we say the Devil's Rejects kind of just because it draws influence from it. But even still, like, to this day, nothing has really kind of paralleled the influence or just overall impact that Texas Chainsaw Massacre has had. On, on not just horror movies, but, like, I think cinema entirely like right it's it's something like i I don't really even know how else to to say it Uh, um i mean it's kind of a slasher movie but i mean uh, all of the slasher movies drew influence from it even though this one technically a slasher movie or i guess it could be considered the first slasher movie but it's it's yeah. Like, I mean, I know there's some people credit Psycho, but then there's there was like some Italian horror film before that I can't remember that's that's been credited, and then some people say, well, Black Christmas was the first uh, slasher just because it did the killer point of view, which is like one of the defining you know aspects of Friday Thirteenth is the killer sure. point of view and Halloween and Halloween, right. I think yeah, it's like it's like a combination of those few, and including Texas Chainsaw, that then defined, you know, that Halloween, and then onward took. It's just the term slasher came from Friday the Thirteenth. Sure, but they already ex- existed before that. But I mean, like, other than I guess Norman Bates, you'd be hard pressed to find a character that's more iconic with the horror movie genre than Leatherface. Definitely. Which I guess is part of the reason you would consider it to be even on the same level as some of those character driven slashers. He's the first killer with who doesn't really talk and with a mask and a weapon. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That's probably a lot of that. That had a lot of influence. I guess I, I, I do want to ask, uh, Nick, are you the only one that had not seen this film prior? Correct. Okay. So thoughts? coming into it completely raw in 2019, yeah. like I, I, I'm, I'm very curious to know what your thoughts are on this movie as a whole. Um. So for me... I did not know what to expect, and going into it, it felt like, you know, kind of college-esque film uh, in terms of how it was shot, and it wasn't until the first death scene that the movie really came into purview for me. Um... But once once it did, it really got me going, and I really enjoyed it. Like like I said, um, the scene where he pulls the girl back into the house and closes the door, 
I would say that's definitely one of the best uh, scenes, whether it's shot or not, uh, in motion picture history. Up there with the first scene in Team America for me. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rate the movie. I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. I know I'm not gonna be the only one that do it, does it does that, but um, yeah, 10 out of 10. It's just the perfect night, the perfect movie. I'm uh, going 10 out of 10. Yeah, it's a 10 out of 10 for me too. Uh, believe it or not, I'm also going 10 out of 10. I know yeah, I tend to be like one of the yeah. harshest critics, but Chuck, 10 out of 10. 100%. You have to give it a 10 out of 10 or you're banned from the podcast. He already, he already did, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we need to watch like more B movies just so the reviews go longer. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, I feel like wait, we've been talking for what, 30 minutes? This 30, is ridiculous. 37 no, minutes. We have, we, have, we have nothing to bash or like. We need no, to it's it it's now. it's such a good movie. We, I mean, all we're doing is sitting here filleting it. I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> oh, I do remember something. Um, when he smears the blood on the car, it's sort of hinted that he did that to mark it for the cook to see for some reason. Oh, like, uh, you I know what? Say. Maybe that's so he could know to say that they didn't have any gas. I don't know. All right. Yeah, something like that, and and because then the cook kept saying, "Why don't you stay here? D- d- don't go mess around these houses. Just stay here. My, yeah. my tank tank won't be here till." Yeah, they were the marks. Uh, yeah, because then there's all the was, that was the chalk. chalk instead of the yeah yeah right, and that's why he cut his hand, and um, oh but, damn, dude, that now it all comes together. I, um. <laughs> But there were, there were some facts I wanted to share uh, about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, you know, for example, and I got this from mentalfloss.com. Um, <laughs> but uh, the movie was inspired by a Christmas shopping crowd. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Go on. Basically, <laughs> it was Toby Hooper's attempt to make a modern retelling of Hansel and Gretel uh, to a real-life Wisconsin wow. murderer. And corpse defiler Ed, uh, I'm probably butchering this name. It's either Gene or Gene. I don't know, but Gene. Uh, according Take to you. Hooper, you would know that. Uh, though the light bulb moment that really ignited the film came at a department store during the Christmas 1972 shopping rush. Um, there were big oh, yeah. Christmas crowds. Uh, Toby was frustrated, and he found himself uh, near a display rack of chainsaws. And he just <laughs> zoned in on it and wanted to kill everybody. Um, uh, never knew that. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was not the original title. Uh, it I was, believe I knew that. I don't know what the title is. It was going to be called Head Cheese. <laughs> no. No, seriously. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nick. Yes. I, was, I remember what I was going to ask you. Did you... What were you thinking when they were coming up on that house and you saw the generator and all the cars outside? What was your Did you know this was probably going to be like the the house? Uh to be honest with you, I didn't know cuz I mean, I've never seen the movie before, so Okay. The only thing I had seen was that scene of him dragging the girl back into the house. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Toby Hooper really wanted a PG rating. <laughs> um, well, there was no PG thirteen. It was either PG or R. Right. Well, so that's or 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 like X, I guess, think, back in those yeah. days. So basically, it was the the violence was suggested rather than directly depicted because of this. Uh, um, and that that was better. That that was actually better for the movie anyway. Despite its R rating, yeah, obviously it's gonna get an R. Um, the uh, the legendary dinner scene was shot in a single day. <laughs> the cast actually disliked Franklin. <laughs> yeah, go figure. So did he, the audience. 
he was a that guy was a method actor, so he was staying in character as Franklin, uh, uh, like outside of shooting, and they just hated him. But I guess that was the point. Yeah. Um, Leatherface's victims treated him as an outsider behind the scenes. Um. Uh, basically, he yeah, was, he was he so smelly, stunk. Yeah, because yeah. of the thing. The guy. The suit. Um, the guy that played the hitchhiker, Edwin Neal, he said that filming this movie was more miserable than his time in Vietnam. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did he go into any detail? The dinner scene was hot. It was extremely hot. I had the windows covered because it was in the daylight. So there's just like no breeze coming to nothing and no air conditioner. It was just awful. <sighs> It smelled too. Sure. Yeah, th- this movie looked like it was miserable to make. Honestly, uh, the movie allegedly has a connection to the mafia, uh, because in terms of ticket sales, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the most profitable films of all time. With the addition of an extra investment to help him finish post production, Hooper had made the film for a little more than eighty thousand uh, dollars. Then. Bryanston acquired it for distribution for $225,000. The film went on to make $12 million at the box office in its first year. But Bryanston ultimately claimed only about $1 million of that. Why this discrepancy? Allegedly because Bryanston owners Joe and Lou Piranio, obviously Italian, uh, were members of the Colombo crime family. The brothers apparently got into the film business in the first place after muscling away rights uh to another classic 70s cult film deep throat (laughs) um allegedly uh one cast member used to frighten moviegoers at screenings um because of its realism true story marketing texas chainsaw created the opportunity for some interesting encounters between fans and cast members uh McMinn uh, once recalled picking up a hitchhiker with a friend, which is ironic given the film's uh, relationship <laughs> to hitchhikers, and listening to him describe how scary the film was to her until he asked, until she asked if he recognized her. I thought he was going to have a coronary. Of all the cast members, it was Ed Neal, the hitchhiker himself, would have no. the most amusing reaction from fans he used to visit screenings of the film at Austin's Village Theater, wait for his scenes to come up, and then tap viewers on the shoulder and watch them freak out. They finally (laughs) asked me not to come back anymore. I love that. Uh, And then, last but not least, uh, you can have lunch at Leatherface's house. Uh, The original location used as the house of Leatherface and his family are located, is located in uh, Williamson County, Texas. In which is now the Round Rock area. The house isn't there anymore, but if you head west of Austin into Kingsland, you can find the actual home restored and now in use as a restaurant. It's called the Grand Central Cafe, and though the owners proudly include its cinematic heritage on, on their website, you won't find any human bones as part of the decor. But do they serve barbecue? You know, I, I, I couldn't tell you that. So, <laughs> closing thoughts? I was curious how things were going to go. This is the first time we've seen something that would be considered a legitimate classic. And I mean, the fact that we gave it 10 out of 10 all around, I mean, I don't know that it's hard to imagine that we're going to repeat that uh, (laughs) unless we watch again, one of the outright classics. Um, I have a handful in mind. I'm not going to, show my hand just yet but yeah this is I seen it, this. it's definitely lived up to its reputation over the years and every time i watch it i look forward to it so i mean i i haven't yeah. seen it in uh probably over a little over 10 years so i didn't there's only a few things i remembered so when i saw the whole thing I, it was like almost a new feel for me and it was it was great Sure. Uh, did we do a sequel rundown by chance, Chuck? Oh, uh, we did not. Go so, ahead, go for it. 
This is <laughs> so Nicole much territory to cover here. I'm sorry. What was that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna be the <laughs> sorry. Most loaded, loaded one we've had uh, so far. So there are several sequels, and they're all like. There's several reboots, so they all have their like they disperse into these alternate timelines, and I'll just try to go like in order as like which one should. But so we have Chainsaw Two came out in the early '80s, I think, or mid '80s, and it if we remember from the first one, it talks about how um, this was a an incident that was you know this house was discovered. It was an after the fact, but the second one retcons that and says that. Um, when people went to look, you know, based on Sally's story, it was actually nothing was found. So they they escaped, and I guess somehow they're able to clean up all those hundreds of teeth and bones and all those different missing people's cars, and they got away. So I, it's a movie, but <laughs> it turns it tur- yeah, it turns out the cook, whose real name is Drayton Sawyer, and Leatherface escaped along with a. A new member of the family, or at least one we haven't seen before, called Chop Top, played by Bill Mosley, who it's explained that he's the twin brother of the hitchhiker who died in the first, who was absent in the first film because he was actually in Vietnam. Hitchhiker's body is actually still in the movie, and they use it as like a marionette puppet thing, and they pretend it's still alive. (laughs) It's amusing, but... um, it's it's a complete 180 from the first. It's an incredibly cheesy. It relies a lot on gore and violence. And there's even like a cut version of it, you know, uncut version. And it's just a flat out dark comedy. Um, it's like the three stooges, it's like Larry, Curly, and Moe. And there's a huge gap in quality too. Like you can even see on IMDb, the first one has almost a seven. This movie has a 5.6. And I think that's pretty well deserved. So does Toby Hooper yeah. have anything to do with the sequels or is it just credited he, to characters? He directed the second one. Oh, really? Yeah, which is why that's strange that he would... There's such a difference in the theme, but I guess he was just going along with what was popular. Just yeah. more. You know, and uh, this for, when, what, what year did you say the second one came out? Oh, boy. I should have looked this up. I think it's... Uh, mid 80s okay so then this was back in around the time where like the horror movie franchises were starting to kick off so yeah yeah, they were again trying to i guess capitalize off of you know sequel madness of horror films i suppose um so then we have one called leatherface texas chainsaw massacre 3 which returned to the dark roots of the first this is probably the only sequel that I actually somewhat enjoy, even though it's nowhere near as good as the first. But it's left ambiguous as to whether it directly follows two. Um, and it could go either way. It's either a soft reboot and like an alternate sequel to the first. So technically, it's also a part two, even though it's called part three. But there's some subtle references to the second one, but there's a lot more references to the first that does indicate it kind of ignores the second one because um, Leatherface in this movie, he actually walks with a limp and he has a leg brace that was um, caused by the, you know, him getting cut at the end of the first movie. And in the second movie, he doesn't have that. So there's just all these different hints, but then they include some like mentions from the, from the second one and you kind of convoluted, but the fourth film has a crawl screen as well or a text and that then mentions the first three as if they're all their own movies so it just doesn't make any sense um but i i particularly like the third because the Leatherface has a gigantic chainsaw and it's like three feet long and it's supposed to be the excalibur chainsaw and it says on the side of it <laughs> uh the saw is family which is a quote from the second one so, for instance, but, and we don't exactly see, okay, spoilers, we don't exactly see Leatherface die at the end of the second one. And this uh, extended family 
you know, in another house somewhere else, all new people is, I guess that's what we're supposed to assume. But, um, fourth one I saw once it is the worst one of top five worst movies I've done. So ironically enough, the fourth one and the, I believe that's what is it? The next generation is what they call it. Uh, right. I am. This is the one I am honestly the most interested in actually seeing. And I don't know if it's because of my own sick curiosity <laughs> or what, but well, I mean, it's okay. So it has Matthew McConaughey, Dennis <laughs> Hopper, and Renee Zellweger. Dennis Hopper like, in the fourth one? I thought he was, wasn't he? He's in the second. He's in the second one. Maybe I'm maybe I'm conflating the two. Uh, crap! Now, damn it! I hate googling on 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 recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's Zellweger, Matthew McConaughey. Um, all right, Leatherface all right, all has right. <laughs> <laughs> Leatherface has like a reduced role, and he just screams a lot, dogs and whatnot. Um, okay, yeah, it doesn't look like that, they, Hopper is. Oh yeah, go ahead. In it, it. Uh, No, no Dennis Hopper in this one. Yeah, I, I must have conflated the two. Yeah, but it definitely has Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger. And the, honestly, the absence of Dennis Hopper makes me want to see it less. But even <laughs> still, I you mean Super Mario again, Brothers morbid movie curiosity legend? has me wanting to see this. I mean, it it is definitely a, it, it. Out of all the movies, even the more recent ones, it sticks out. But um. I just, I'll never watch that movie again. I just, <laughs> I just remember seeing that, being so excited that um, they rented me a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film for my birthday, and it was that. I had no idea what I was in for. <laughs> but um, I was about nine or ten, yeah. But I was, I was a huge horror fan still. Um, so then after that, they break from the original timeline. And they go into the Jessica Biel starring remake. Uh, and that was what? It's okay. 10 or so years later? What? That came out in, like, I guess 2007, 2008, something like that? I was like 2003. Oh, really? Was that early? And then, yeah, yeah, two or three. And then, I mean, it was all right. It was, you know, needless. And then, um, then a prequel to the remake came out. That was even more, again, not needed. That was called Texas Chainsaw Massacre the Beginning. It was its own timeline now, completely unrelated to the first four. And then uh, then they came out with Texas Chainsaw, which is a sequel to the first movie. So now there's three movies, three different Chainsaw movies that are supposed to be part two. <laughs> now, is that the 3D movie or is the 3D a different one? It is that one, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So then there came out Leatherface, which is a prequel to the first movie, uh, sharing a timeline with also Chainsaw 3D. And that's with Steven Dorff as this crazy sheriff who is attacking the Sawyer family because they killed his daughter. Sounds a little similar to Devil's Rejects, to be honest. But <laughs> um, I couldn't watch it all. I watched all of Chainsaw 3D. It was, it was okay. It's better than the remake timeline, but... Um, it's just a one-time deal. It it's, it has some enjoyable factors. It, one thing I liked was it it took place right after the first one <laughs> ended. No, they don't mention the hitchhiker, unfortunately, or the uh, the trucker, unfortunately. Uh, the thing that I could not stand about Leatherface and I couldn't finish it was because instead of Leatherface just being, I don't know, some kind of born sort of feeble-minded uh mentally handicapped individual this film says that he was actually a he was born a completely normal kid who was then corrupted and so we're supposed to feel sympathy for him and i thought that's so unnecessary watch it, it all that. i didn't it actually, it actually sounds like modern day time was like <laughs> issues i guess kind of yeah. And that was the 
That was the last one so far. Um, that was 2017. If I had to, I would recommend the first three. Stop at three. If you if you want to torture yourself, you watch four. But um, that's Ooh. where I yeah, that's where we I. We will be reviewing every single one of them. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> right after we do our Langoliers episode, yeah. yes, which uh, is coming to you live <laughs> next episode <laughs> on pay per view. Um, so thank you guys for joining us and gals. Uh, this obviously was the best movie that we have seen thus far. It just keeps getting better. It's going to get better from here again. Thank you for joining us.